So if you're logged in and looking at your own REPLs, another way to start a program is to use this red button, sort of Android style, at the bottom right. So I'm going to start a Python program, and it's going to open me a new program. Give me a random name, so I'm just going to call that printing, because I'm going to give you a quick demo how to print, and I, again, I don't need that section on the left. So I'm going to zoom in slightly to make it a little bit easier for you to uh, read. So most programming system, most computer systems you can think of as having an input, a process and an output. And really all of those three things are quite important because if you don't do any processing then your output is going to be the same as your input. If you don't do any output then you're not going to know what your program does and um, without any input quite often you're not going to be able to control your program or it's going to have to do the same thing every time. So all of those three stages are important and because really you need input and you need to be able to see what you're doing before the processing becomes worthwhile, input and output tend to be the first things we look at. And the uh, kind of programmer's joke is that the first program you do in any programming language is to print uh, the text hello world. So in Python uh, that's how you uh, print the text hello world and if I run my program uh, we can see on the right hand side it says hello world so that's the output on the right hand side so how does this work well um, Python is a high level programming language the uh, commands often resemble English words in this case printing so printing not literally coming out of your printer but printing to the screen and uh, because it is a function um, the information that you give it to operate on uh, is contained within brackets and so and because it's text it appears in speech marks so there's a variety of different things that you, that you can print and you can try them one at a time over here in the black section or we can add them to the program so we can see them all I'll just add them over here so probably the most common thing you want to print is text so text goes in speech marks but you can just print uh, a number so 123 for example and notice when I run this program It'll print hello world, it'll print 123. Each time I use the print command, it starts a new line. So we can force a new line, and we'll have a look at that in a second. Um, notice I didn't need the speech marks around the number. It, it handles numbers and text differently. Um, so I can do that. I can also print the result of a calculation. So I can say print, um, I can say 1 plus 2, for example. And that's uh, 1 plus 2 and what that will do is it, will, it won't print 1 plus 2 it'll print the result of that cal calculation very much like um, if you did the same if you did equals 1 plus 2 in an Excel spreadsheet and it surprises some people that actually you can use the plus operator with text as well so if I said a plus b what it'll do is um, it'll join the text together so plus and the other operators minus and we use the star for multiply and the slash for divide uh, behave as you'd expect uh, mathematically but we can um, add text as well so if I run this program what we'll see is the 1 plus 2 gives us the 3 and the uh, a plus B gives us the AB so if you've never done any programming before it's probably worth also pointing out that the computer does things in the order that you tell it so it says hello for hello world first and then one two three and then one plus two and then a plus B so what about if um, I do this what about if I take some text and I add a number can I add together things that are different well let's have a look no it doesn't like that so some of the error messages that you get um, aren't entirely helpful, particularly if you're a beginner. But the fact that it's printing loads of stuff in red suggests that you've done something wrong. And here it's saying type error. So when we have a look at variables, we'll talk a little bit more about type. But basically type is the sort of information that um, is contained within the, uh, the brackets in that case. So you're saying you can't mix the text. So text is known as a string in programming. Uh, STR is short for string, so again it abbreviates things. Um, so it says it must be a string, not an int. Now int is short for integer, which is a whole number. So basically that's a very elaborate way of saying you can't add words and numbers together. That doesn't make sense. So that's what, it, um, that's what it's complaining about. However, uh, one uh, interesting quirk of Python is that you can multiply 
text. Now, I've, I've not known this in other, la other languages, um, but if I do something like this, what it will actually give me is 12 A's. So that's quite useful if you want to um, underline things or have, you know, rule off sections of the screen if you're creating a menu or something because you can quickly calculate uh, or create long strings of the same character. Um, or you can use you know, equals, for example. Some characters don't join together. So the reason I use the underscore first is um, two uh, adjacent underscores do join together without a gap, whereas if you use a minus sign or an equal sign, they won't. So you can do that, and that's fine. Uh, what we can also do is, we haven't looked at variables or input yet, but um, you can print uh, the contents of a variable. So if we say name equals Andrew, for example, uh, what we can also do then is we can print name. So notice we can tell the difference between text and variable because I haven't put name there in speech marks. So that doesn't mean print the word name. It means print the thing called name. So it's like a label if you like. So I've said name. I'm going to use the, the word, the box name to store the word Andrew if you like. And then I'm going to print that off. So Andrew, there we go. And I can do all the things that I've uh, done previously, so I can multiply that if I want to. Um, notice that if I if I join things together, so um, if I did something like this, so if I did hello, so you'll start to see what you know the power of uh, being able to join things together when I do this, because obviously joining A and B together, not much point in doing that. I might as well just put A B in the speech marks. But if I do this. I can join together text, and I can join together text and that variable because that variable contains text. So effectively, I'm joining together two pieces of text. So now if I run that, it's going to say, hello, Andrew. But notice it doesn't put the space in. So computers aren't clever. They don't know the rules of grammar or um, what looks nice on the screen. They just, tell, uh, they just do exactly what you tell them. So you need to be very explicit. So if you want a space, you need to put one in. So also, we can start to do things like this now. We can, um, when we get a bit more advanced, so in a future video, we'll be having a look at variables and uh, input. So we can say, um, what is your name? So the input command um, behaves very much like print in terms of what you put inside the brackets. So if you want to ask the user for some information, you need to present them with a question so they know what you're asking for and then you need to give the computer somewhere to store the answer. So this is going to ask the question, what is your name? And it's going to store the answer in the variable name. And then it's going to print that back. OK, so I'm going to uh, click Run. And so I'm going to type in Andrew is my name. And it's going to say, hello, Andrew. So print, I can use the plus um, to combine various different uh, types of information from different places. What about um, if I do want to combine a number? So what about if I said uh, age, uh, how old are you? And then we said something like this, um, you don't look. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to say, how old are you? I'm going to say 21. And it'll say, you don't look 21. OK, now you might be thinking, but hang on, we've combined some text and a number there. Um, but actually, what the input does is it always converts the input into text. So we'll look at this next time. If I say type age, actually, it'll tell me that it's a string. So in that case, it's worked. But if we'd have uh, gone for something like this, age is 21, it doesn't like it because, again, it's giving me the same error as before. It's saying um, 21 is not text, so you can't add it. However, what you can do is you can, instead of using a plus, you can separate the things you want to print using a comma. And this is really handy. So if I run this now, it will work. But notice, uh, another quirk of doing it this way, it does put an extra space in. So if you're going to use a comma, you don't actually need a space. And you can combine all sorts of um, information that way. So the only issue with doing it this way, it's nice and easy, just separate all the things you want to print with commas. However, if you don't want a space, 
So if I wanted to put a full stop at the end of this, for example, um, that would be a little bit more tricky. So now we can do things like that. Um, so we can combine different types of information just using a comma. Uh, what about if we want to change the layout slightly? Well, there's some special characters. So we said each time you start a print, it, um, it starts a new line. But also, if you use backslash n, backslash n is looks like two symbols, backslash and n, but it's in fact um, treated as a single character, which means start a new line. So it's like pressing the... Um, it's like pressing the enter key. So if I do this, we've got one line, backslash n, which oops, uh, backslash n, which starts a second line, and then some text that says second line. So if I run that now, and uh, we can split things over multiple lines. So that's quite useful sometimes. Um, also, there's a th there's uh, another one of these special symbols called um, t t for tab backslash t. So if I run that, what that does is that moves over to the next column. So it creates a gap between the um, between the columns. So that's quite useful if you want to print a sort of simple table. Um, and you can combine those two together. So if I did a backslash t b, that would give me a, and then the next column it would give me a b. And then I did uh, backslash n, start a new line, and then c, and then backslash t and then D, when I run that program, what it will give me is effectively a little table just from a single line of code. So that can be quite useful as well. So um, we've looked at all the different things that you can do with print. You can print text, you can print a variable, you can print a number, or you can print the results of a calculation. And you can use a comma to combine those things, or you can use plus uh, where the uh, type of information matches so you can join two pieces of text with a plus or to add two numbers together with a, with a plus um, or you can also multiply text if you want to repeat um, the the whole string a multiple number of times then you can do that as well and we had a quick look at uh, input so the, the so this would also work um, as part of a question so if you said name equals input um, like that if I run that it'll format the question in the same way. So input behaves very much like uh, the print command. So we'll have a little bit more of a look at um, input when we look at variables because um, the answer to the question will always be stored in a variable and sometimes we might need to convert it. So we said input always inputs things as text. So Python 3, this is one of the new things. Um, Python 2, you had raw input for text and input for numbers, but Python 3, you have input for everything.